All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about the first five modifications I suggest to you to install on your newly purchased WRX or STI, which congratulations, by the way, on the new car purchase. I know it's always fun and exciting to get a new car. So if you are not comfortable voiding your warranty, I don't suggest doing any of these modifications because they are all going to be ones that void that powertrain and drivetrain warranty that we also value just so much from the dealership, right? Now, if you're not comfortable avoiding that warranty, I did just make that video covering modifications that you can do within that warranty period that will not void the powertrain and the drivetrain aspects of the car. So with that, let's just get into it. Let's start talking about these five modifications that I suggest you do first to your newly purchased WX or STI if you are going to modify it. Now the first modification that I have for you guys is going to be an access port. This is going to be your gateway, your gateway, your key to Subaru modifications. Now that access port does a lot of things outside of just tuning, but we're gonna get into the tuning aspect of this in a little bit. Now, first up, the access port does give you options to do OTS tunes. If you don't know what that stands for, it means off the shelf. It's already a pre-programmed map that you can pretty much upload to the car that has specific parameters for specific modifications that allow you to use certain mods short term up until you get either an e-tune, a pro tune, or another type of tune to specifically tune your car. Now, outside of tuning, this access port does a lot of things. It gives you options to be able to pull up cells. If you don't know what cell stands for, also that one is a check engine light. So if you get a cell come up on your dash and you don't want to go to O'Reilly's AutoZone and have someone else scan for it, you can easily just pull up the code on your access port, see what the problem is with the car, and go from there. Now because you're able to pull codes and see things like that, you are able to troubleshoot your car a lot easier whenever a problem does happen. And I promise you problems will happen. It's just the nature of modifying cars. Now in addition to being able to tune and check whatever engine light your car may or may not be throwing, the access port is an awesome gauge to be able to tell you real-time monitors for what the car is doing. You're, allowed, you're able to pull up six different gauges at once on the access port while you're driving, so that way you can see whatever the car is doing. If you want to see boost, air-fuel ratio, your battery voltage if you want to, injector duty cycle, fuel pump duty cycle, all of these different things is all packed into this one little guy. Now, you can get an access port for, I believe, around $650, $675 is what I think Cobb marks them up to now. Um, I do highly suggest getting the v3 and not the v2 if you are an older gr or gd chassis but it's going to be your gateway into all modifications so access port it's probably going to be your most important modification that you do on the car Now, the second modification on this list of first five mods I suggest you do is going to be an IAG Street Series Air Oil Separator. Now, essentially, if you don't know what an air oil separator is and you don't know what the acronym is, because some people will call these AOSs, which is just air oil separator. Essentially, what this does is it helps mitigate as much of the blow by as it can out of the system. So with the factory PCV system, you get a lot of buildup of oil vapor that builds up, gets pushed back through your turbo inlet, gets fed through the turbo and then into the system. Now, what can happen when doing this is the oil oil vapor that is pushed back through the system can mix with the air fuel ratio or the air fuel mixture inside of the combustion chamber because you have dirty air going in there. If that oil and that gasoline are mixing together, it's going to end up denaturing the fuel, bringing down the octane rating. Essentially, if your octane rating comes down, let's say you put 93 in there, let's say that a little bit of oil vapor is mixing with your gasoline, it can bring that octane rating down from 93 down to maybe 91 or 89, depending on how much blow by you have. Now, there's nothing wrong with the PCV system. It works very good for emissions purposes. But for performance, like we all want, I highly suggest getting an air oil separator because that's going to significantly increase the life sp lifespan of your engine and just make more bang. Because we want more bang. When we get more bang, we get more power. That's what we want, right? Air oil separator, mod number two. Now, the next modification that I have for you guys is actually gonna be in the same area. It's gonna be a turbo back exhaust. So if you don't know what a turbo back exhaust is, it goes from the turbo essentially all the way to the back of the car. It's a turbo back exhaust. So just boop, all the way back there. Now, a turbo back exhaust is going to give you the most bang for your buck when it comes to initial modifications for the car. Now, 
I have said this before in previous videos, if you have a 15 and plus STI, you cannot run a downpipe and an intake combo together. You cannot run an OTS tune with them together. You will get decreased dam, you will get increased feedback knock. With the 15 and plus STIs, allegedly they make a little more power than Subaru claims that they did. So the fuel system just is not able to keep up with the increased airflow that the car is getting. So you can either run one or the other. So in that instance, this is why I'm suggesting a turbo back exhaust. It'll also open up that exhaust more so it's a lot more free flowing. You'll get some noise out of it too because we all like to hear our cars roar and rumble. If you're still on unequal length headers, then you get the rumble. If you're on equal length, then you, you know what I mean. No more rumble for you. But modification number three, turbo back exhaust, best bang for your buck, buy one. Next up, we have one of my personal favorite modifications to do. That's going to be a short shifter and bushings. Now the STI already comes with a pretty notchy gearbox. And for both the WRX and the STI, you have the option of getting the car with an OEM STI short shifter. Now, a lot of you guys ask me, is the OEM STI short shifter worth getting? My answer is gonna be no. So if you are looking at getting a short shifter for you STI guys, I suggest the Cartboy short shifter with the front and rear shifter bushings. If you are a WRX owner, I highly suggest that you get the Boomba short throw shifter with the front shifter bushing, the Perrin shifter stop, as well as the shifter plate and brass shifter bushing. This is gonna make the car a lot more fun to drive. It's really gonna enhance how you interact with the car because one of my favorite modifications, as you guys know, are the driver feedback mods and the modifications that you interact with on a daily basis. Because let's face it, whenever you're driving, you're always on the stick. You're always doing whatever you're doing with it. You're playing with it in traffic. You're shifting up, you're shifting down, you're shifting left, you're shifting right, and then you go into reverse. So a short shifter, going to be my fourth modification. That should be one of your first mods that you do to your freshly new WRX or STI. No. So the fifth and final modification that I have for you guys isn't necessarily a modification, but it is going to be either a pro tune or an e-tune for your car. Now I get a lot of people asking me about OTS tunes. Like I said, OTS stands for off the shelf. They come with the Cobb access port. You can also download some different OTS maps from, from different vendors out there or off of Cobb's website. Now, when it comes to using an OTS tune, they're very generalized tunes made for a lot of different areas. And with that being said, there's so much that goes into a tune such as air pressure, air density, density, altitude, location, temperature, specific modifications done to the vehicle. Every, like, yes, my stock EJ257 or your stock FA20 might be assembled like every other one out there, but the engines are going to react and respond differently to modifications that you're putting on the car. So getting off of an OTS tune and getting onto a Pro Tune or an E-Tune is going to benefit the car greatly. If you are looking for some good E-Tuners out there, I know there's like Mickey Bot or Ambot Tuning, Bren Tuning, there's a whole bunch of people people out there who do e-tunes and they're all just make sure that you're picking a good one if you don't want to do an e-tune and you do have access to getting a pro tune it's also a very good idea now if you are getting a pro tune it's also not a bad idea to throw some additional parts on the car so that way you can really take advantage of the money that you're spending on the pro tune but i promise you you will see a night and day difference between a pro tune and an off the shelf tune or an off the shelf map either way you're gonna see a huge difference between the two of them and this lit i know my list is a little bit different than what other people do on youtube but mine are more geared towards making your guys's car last longer giving you the best driving experience and getting the best bang for your buck when it comes to modifying your car so we just talked about five really good modifications that I highly suggest you do first to your car. So there we have it, everyone. There are my first five modifications for you guys for your WRX and your STI. Like I said, this list is geared towards giving you the best bang for your buck, the best driving experience, and the best reliability longevity that you can get out of the car for your first five modifications. Now, I'm not gonna sit here and tell you, you need an axle back, you need a you need a cold air intake. None of that, none of that bullshit or crap out there like a lot of other people tell you guys. So so, I mean, if you guys do have any questions about anything, you guys know I always answer. You guys know I always respond. So hit me up. Feel free if you do got any questions. But that is all I got for you guys in this one. So if you liked the video or if it helped you at all, if you are new to Subaru and you didn't quite know where to start, but you want to avoid that warranty, make some power, this is your way to do it. So, like I said, if you liked the video, go ahead, hit that like button, turn it blue, like the inside of the hood on the Subaru as we all saw when it was popped earlier. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, hit your boy up, that corner right there, 
And with that, I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out, homies. Woo!